All right. Here we go. Chat. Here we go. Appears to be up. I see shiny faces starting to come in now. Hi Ladies guys. and gentlemen, we, I guess I don't need this microphone. <laughs> <laughs> we have another audio problem today, you guys. It looks like we're getting audio out there, so let us know if you can hear us. Allison, how are you? Carol, hello. Hi, my friend. Hey, Allison. Hey, Bruce Carol. Bruce, press clickety. Guys, can you hear us? In the chat, please tell us if you can hear us. I'm guessing Bruce playing clickety clickety was us typing on the keyboard, so it sounds like he can hear us. Julie sees us. Audio sounds good. All right. Yeah, Jenna okay. Leah, we're not even sure what happened. Literally just happened right when we were about to go live. So we'll work it out, but we'll work it out, you guys. It is uh that is the cookie monster. I will I would like you guys to take a moment okay, and okay, appreciate okay. <laughs> appreciate the graphics. Look at those graphics. It's a cookie graphic, it's a cookie monster. Hey Stephanie Savinkoff, nice to Stephanie see you. Stephanie Savinkoff, hi, how are Richard you? Richard Bennett, nice to see you. All right, sounds great. Okay, Mike, here we go. And ready? There we go. This is a fake smile that I plastered on because shit went south with the audio. Everything's Tip working great. Tip jar suspended today. Tip jar suspended. Everything's working great till literally five minutes ago, and then our expensive audio solution suddenly. Okay. You need a little bit of light. You're a little. You're a little dark, like your mood. There we go. Dark like my mood. Here, let me do that. Want me to do the scale face? Yeah. I'm not terribly good at a game face, in case you don't know. <laughs> so we are using. Uh, I hey, believe, Matt McRoberts. We're nice using to see you. one of our Logitech video cameras, audio stuff. So we have no idea what this sounds like. We can't hear ourselves at all. If you hear any problems with the audio, just let us know in the chat, and uh, and we will we will address it. Thank you, thank you, Beth. I'm sure you're talking about a looks marvelous. Ah, well, and and Tracy, I know you're always really good at letting us know about the sound. I would appreciate if you would stay on that again today because yeah. we don't have headphones to hear and we don't have our, our sweet, nice mics either, but at least we're here. So we're It looks marvelous, that. marvelous. I look like I've been constipated for a week because I'm so grumpy with the tech stuff. So grumpy! But the good news is, let's do it one more time. Okay. Show them your game face. Show them your angry face. <laughs> now I'll do the same thing. Here's my game face. <laughs> like it's not terribly threatening at all and here's my angry face which mostly seems like i smelled something bad i i we've only been married two months not yeah. even that's not her angry face i but that's I, my that's my make an angry face angry face i've been working with her a long time if you go to my profile on facebook we there's a wedding photo of us wearing orange and black oh. uh a boas and he wanted to do this he's like get up on that bench and give me your best game face and you can absolutely see i have no game face at all no angry i can do that but i always have to do it like this which is why that photo is like that i have to be pretending to flex i'm pretty sure <laughs> ace, ace never been in a situation where she has to flash the mean mug to communicate some things she got a natural face but she can't do a fake mean face you guys it is national chocolate chip cookie day we're going to celebrate that We've got our Hello's Room. If you have questions, celebrations, or ideas for Sigler in Place, email those to info at Empty Set. We've got a bunch of celebrations today. But first, our first sponsor is, oh crap, a vamp for a little bit. i got to get uh, this stuff up. Our first sponsor, I have no idea who it is, but we're going to do a couple, two, three things. We are going to make a um, Shoot. vodka gimlet. This month is a new uh, vodka drink. Uh, this whole month we'll be doing vodka drinks. This one's a very classic drink. It's called the Gimlet. There are very many drinks that are a little bit of simple syrup, a little bit of citrus or something sour, and a spirit. Um, and there's there's a goodly amount of you. You've, of course, uh, had a martini that is uh, a, a gin or vodka, a little bit of um, vermouth, which can be which is sweet or dry, but it changes the flavor profile a little bit, and then some olives or whatever. Uh, there's a drink called the Gibson, which is vodka and um, cocktail so, onions, so like uh, a pickled Mel, onions. A Mel Gibson? No, well, so it was my dad's favorite drink, so maybe. Um, but it's uh, it's served in a martini glass up. Um, we're gonna make a gimlet, which is lime juice oh, and right. vodka and simple syrup. Um, and we're ready to roll. Ready? Yeah, we're ready to roll. First okay. of all, our first quote unquote sponsor of the day. Our sponsors are nonprofit people who are doing different things, hopefully to help other people or help you. Our first one is you are now less than 90 days away from the presidential election in the United States of America. Ali Kirby, this does not apply to you, but other people who are here for 
Oh, hello. Uh, nice to see you out there. Thank you. Other people who are American, you have less than 90 days to get registered. Vote.org is where you can go and you can see if you are registered. Very important. Many people think they're registered. They are not. And if you are not registered, you can register from here. You also can register to vote by mail from here to see if it's allowed in your state. And if you get on that now, you'll get the ballot in time, even though we're having some problems with our post office at the moment, apparently. And we'll have definitely more as the election comes up. The sooner you get that done, the better off it is. And vote.org is a good place, a bunch of resources. Now we'll go back to the main camera. Hey, what day is it? Uh, it is... What? Ooh, yeah! Chocolate chip cookies. These cookies were made special for Uncle Scott by uh, Scott's niece, Riley. Yep. And they sh showed up... Perfect timing. They showed up on Saturday, and they're in this giant container, uh, so it was impossible for Scott to eat them all for today, which is great because I didn't have to turn on the oven and bake cookies. So that worked out. Now so, we got cookies. And you know what time it is? You no know time it is. Is it Sig Locktail time? It's about that time. Mm -hmm. It is boom. Sig Locktail. Sig Locktail with our graphic recently graphicized by none other than empty set in-house designer Scott Pond of Scott Pond Designs. Um, Brittany and Tassie, and who did the logo service? Uh, Brittany and Mike Natasi. Brittany and Mike Natasi designed this logo, sent us in a great logo. And we do what we always do with art here at Empty Set. I, I sketch stuff, we get stuff from artists, whatever we get. We're like, cool, that's done. We love the design. Kick it over to Scott Pond, who kind of puts a little, little Scott a Pond. A little zhuzh on it. A little zhuzh. A little Scott Pond sweat on it. Is that... Is that gross? No? I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, it's internet, so I don't think internet's what it's It's gross. internet. Now we are moving over to our fancy drink cam. Here we go. Is AK. Are we live on the drink cam? There it is. Hi, guys. There's our drink cam. So this one's super easy. Like I said, can you, can we, can we do anything about that it's cutting off my head? Yep, absolutely. Just a tiny bit? Um, thank you. There we go. So as I said, this is a pretty simple cocktail. Many, many, many cocktails are made very simply, um, and they're classics for a reason. This is one of them. This is called, uh, let me find my little, here it is. Uh, this is a vodka. We're going to use vodka. Uh, Jared Miller, I'm not sure if you're in the, in the audience yet, but he sent us a lovely email and um, wanted to send us a BevMo delivery for Sigler in Place. And we have so much booze that uh, I said thanks, but no thanks. And... Um, but I would promise that if I could get it. And then this blue ice is at the grocery store. So he said, try it. He had a chance to taste it up against, oops, there we go, up against the big boys. And he really, really liked it. And it's potato vodka and it's made in the United States. And not a lot of vodka is potato based anymore. Um, so it's a reasonable price point, sort of like Tito's if you are a vodka drinker. I tried it. Uh, I, I made this cocktail on Sunday to make the post on Monday. And so uh, this is actually lovely. Weirdly, it says um, it's... 52 cal calories an ounce, but it also says it's 80 proof, and I don't understand the chemistry of that, so I'm not sure if it's true because it's nothing but liquor. So <laughs> you're asking me? You're asking no, me I'm about just chemistry? saying I don't understand it, but it does taste good. So we're going to use this vodka gimlet. The first thing you do is pour two ounces of vodka into your jigger, and you want to measure out drinks like this. Um, Mostly, you know, so you know how much liquor you're getting, but you want to measure out the sour and the sweet so that they're in balance for your flavor profile. Um, Scott doesn't like very, very many. Um, I'm not sure where we're at. We're going is, just, we'll, we'll go right back to, oops, hip, boom. Now we're um, right back to the, thanks. Going back to the, uh, Scott, Scott doesn't like too many um, oh, shoot. Hold sour on. things. So I screwed this up. I'm going to go back to Sig Locktails 2 iOS camera, boom, there you go. We're there gonna we go. go from here until you're done with the drink. Cool. Uh, so we use uh, three quarters of an ounce for him of um, simple syrup. And this, if you haven't made simple syrup yet, you can certainly buy it at the grocery store, but it is an equal amount of sugar and water. You boil them until the sugar dissolves in the water. You let it cool down, you use it cold in your drinks. And then this is my lime juice. You can see, I tell you guys this all the time. I have all these little fun glass bottles from who knows what. Um, but when my limes are getting a little bit old, this is the season, especially in Southern California, where everyone who has a lime tree has way too many limes. So I just squeeze them all and keep them in the, in, in the fridge in this, or freeze them if I have to. And this is half an ounce of this. All right. Oh, no, wait, sorry. This is one ounce of that. Okay. So we do that. We put this down. And then, <laughs> and that's the cookies you eat while you're waiting or the, your bartender to make your drink, or, you know, who's ever laughing down with you to make your drink. I'm just going to shake it here because we have no headphones or microphones, so I'm going to do this. 
Uh, I did have a friend, um, my good friend Allison, who's in the chat room. I was I was talking with her a little earlier today, and she said, "Okay, tell me honestly, how bad is it going to be if I drink a Manhattan instead of whatever you're drinking?" And you guys know us. You want to you want to drink nothing at all? We're good with that. You want to make this drink? Great. You want to drink your favorite drink? Great. We're fine. However, I didn't mention this to Allison, and I'm not going to hold any of you guys to it. But look at this glorious, glorious glass. Scott won't even touch them. We have no. two of them. No, not to be touched. They are very fragile. Look at how cool that is. Let's get that right up it's so a, see that. the tentacle glass. Um, it it's, is almost like, it's almost like Scott Pond sweat dripping down right there. Boom. Super incredibly fragile, so much so that Scott won't touch it. <laughs> but it's such a pretty, pretty drink. Let me find my lemon. Here, my limes. Here you go. So you put a little, oops, I didn't bring a knife, so I got to do that. I keep explaining to Ava that teeth are not a tool, and she says they are absolutely a tool. It's just a question of whether you want to use that tool or not. But the definition of teeth as a tool, it's hard to argue with. I still stick with, find another tool other than teeth. That's going to hurt things. I know, but then i got to stop the cast. So you pour it out. You can drink it on ice if you like. But this is a traditional gimlet. In the, Why don't you put it back on this camera? Okay. Traditional gimlet in the coolest glass ever. Fabulous. Is that for me? Uh, no, because you don't want to I don't use want it. To, uh, <laughs> uh, Scott and fragile things, not so much. And I just spilled it all over myself. Here you go. No, it was on myself. It's fine. I know, but I got paper towel. There you go. Yeah, is, Sherry, isn't it the cool... Oh, I did it again. <laughs> now I can toast with you. See, so this is a very classic, light, refreshing citrus drink. Um, vodka traditionally has sort of no flavor. Uh, that's the goal of it. A uh, super cheap plastic vodka, uh, plastic uh, handled jug. That probably has a flavor. It's not really going to add to your drink, but that's the big goal of vodka. Me personally, I'll be honest, I can tell super cheap vodka because it's kind of grainy and it hasn't been distilled as much, and that gives you a little bite at the back of your mouth. But I have been in head to head, like, taste these three vodkas, tell me which one's Belvedere, which one's Grey Goose, and which one's Smirnoff, which is way cheaper than the other two. I can't do it. So buy whatever vodka you like, mix any citrus you like with it, a little bit of sugar, it's glorious. Now my dad, uh, I'll tell this quick story, we have gone to see my dad in Florida before uh, Florida became COVID Central. Uh, but not actually Florida and California, now duking it up for COVID okay. Central. And Give me your drink while you're talking. Oh, there we go. And my dad is, a, you know, largely a, a beer guy, not really a big scotch or bourbon guy, but he's getting into those things more now. So we sent him an expensive bottle of scotch, really good stuff, because that is the one... Oh, when we, what you're talking about when we were there. Yeah. Yeah, no, we brought it with us. Oh, brought the it whole with us. you got to check your... Well, back when you were allowed to fly, you got to check your bag and stuff, but it was worth it So we bring one of Scott's We go see scotches. him maybe three years ago, and we bring the scotch, and it was... Uh, what is the kind with the silver antlers on it? Remember? Uh, Dalmore. We bring him a bottle of Dalmore. Lovely, lovely stuff. Got to have scotch with my dad, which, uh, which is kind of relatively new, so it was, it was very fun. And then we, you know, go through that, some of that bottle, we leave, dad goes through the rest of the bottle, we come back, we come back the next year. A year later. A year later, and the bottle of scotch is full. I'm like, oh, dad, I'm so thrilled, you love the Dalmore, you got some more Dalmore. He's like, nah, I didn't buy any more of that goddamn, but it's too expensive to buy. He opens up a closet and he pulls out like this, this two-gallon jug, I don't even know what kind of bourbon it was. He's like, you know what? He just he pulls out a little a little funnel, puts it in the Dalmore. You just pour this right in there. Nobody knows the goddamn difference, and everybody thinks they're drinking fancy scotch. <laughs> so I'll tell you guys. I know we're, this is not like drink central or anything, but I'll tell you um, that part of the reason that vodka is you can you can find a vodka you like that they, they mostly taste the same is there's nothing you do to a vodka other than distill it you can distill it once you can do well probably more than once you can distill it 90 times it may change the flavor a little bit but after you distill it two or three times it's pretty much just alcohol and water right you mix it to the right proof you want by adding water back to it not true for rum not true for scotch not true for bourbon once you've made the alcohol you sit it and age it in a barrel that's been burned on the inside that's made of or whatever 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 so it assumes some of those flavors not even true of moonshine because moonshine starts as a 
the, you can make moonshine out of bananas. You just need some medium to kind of make the out the, the alcohol work. Dude, I smell so much like alcohol <laughs> just covered in it. It was a bad that's a that's a I feel, overfilled that glass. Usually but, it's my job to spill things on things, but you know, sometimes the wife's gotta jump in too. Yeah. But anyway, if you're a, if you're not much into vodka drinks, then one of the nice things about it is it can be the lightest amount of alcohol and it really does. The drinks that you that like you do this with, like you take a little sip. <laughs> oh, and uh, my good friend Sheila D gave me these glasses. I forgot to mention this. They're really fun and really fragile, and you probably only drink your first drink out of them, and then you switch to like a. You easy know, to I, we don't we don't have a show sidekick. I mean, you've Im you've imitated J Ed McMahon, not Jim McMahon, Ed McMahon a couple of times. <laughs> Definitely. I'm starting to think that, that Kelly McCardle is the the show sidekick. Yeah, I did say kicking. I have a drinking problem because I spilled a drink all over He's myself, which is my favorite drinking joke. And I'm not even great one liners in the chat room. Honestly, great one -liners. I love that joke. Uh, what was I going to say? So um, you can also mix some seltzer water into this, and I do that quite a lot in the summertime so that you get a little more hydration, but it will weaken down your drink. Uh, too. Nelzone pointed out that this one looks like it wants to fall over, dude. You're right. This A glass for me should be shaped the exact opposite of this. Wide on the bottom, Actually, narrow on the, the drink, top. Actually, this is the glass that was supposed to be oh. yours. But then oh. we had technical difficulties oh. at the beginning, and I had already made, a you know, so that we don't spend as much time on the cast doing drinks. I had already poured that. I was like, maybe you want to drink. And he was like, get that out of my way. I got, I was grumpy. But now that I'm not grumpy, ladies and gentlemen, we 625, we're late. So we're going to go a little late past 7 o'clock, obviously. But we've got two junkie questions. I've got great ring walk-ups, including one that's a complete mistake. But I'll tell you about that when we get there. We are introducing two, two new bits today. The headline of the week and this day in Siglerism. And that, of course, is created and maintained by none other than Big John Viscar. But before we do that, don't we have a handful of... Uh... We're not, we're not there yet. Oh, we're sorry. We're there. Jumping the gun. We're, and this is how slick we are. How dare I? How dare, how dare I? How, this is how slick we are now. We are teasing not one, but two shows ahead. So audio stuff, uh, ignore, watch me. I wave this hand and over here is the audio stuff. On this Thursday, a world premiere live streamed of a new Scott Sigler short story, I Am Scott Sigler. I will be reading it to you. Nice it, to meet you. Hi, I'm Scott Ziegler. Nice, nice to meet you. you. You look, Ziegler. you look, uh, you look good. What are you doing Thanks. after the show? Thanks. Uh, cleaning off all the alcohol oh, off yeah. my dress. Yeah. I okay. poured an entire hey, drink on my. Are you involved? I am married, sir. Ah, gosh darn it! Can't can't buy a break. Um, brand new story. Please mark it down. We are going to read it. It uh, might be a little long. It's probably going to take like 20, 25 minutes to read. It happens to be a story, oddly, about voting. I wrote it many months ago. It was supposed to be an anthology. It didn't wait up in the anthology. I'll explain all on Thursday, but brand new stuff. If you are tuned in, you will get to hear it first. And then, and then on Tuesday, look, I picked up an E. I picked up an e. I'm so you excited. You did. You're very excited. On Tuesday, August 11th, the whole show. The whole show. The whole show. The whole dang show. Is going to be about A and I and all of you picking the 32 movies, the 32 sports movies that are going to be part of the greatest sports movie bracket of all time. The GOAT of sports movie brackets because, trust me, in two months, there won't be any sports. So we're going to be rolling with this tournament. If you love movies, if you love sports movies, if you just love these faces, Schedule the time. Tune in. It's going to be very, very fun. And now it's time for Siglerbations. Siglerbations. Oh, Siglerbations. And also, if anybody is another keeping thing. track at home, I changed glasses because I was going to give this with the big the big bottom, which Scott <laughs> prefers to Scott, and take that other <laughs> I glass. Do. I and do I prefer... spilled this one up myself, too. I do prefer a big bottom. I won't lie. I, will, I won't lie. Uh, hey, Christmas White, Chris McWhite, nice to see you. Why don't you start with the Sigler Ratio? Okay, so we've got a lot going on, you guys. Uh, first, I want to say um, we have our good friends, uh, Beth and, and Mark Copenhaver, sent us, because of Sigler Rations, these two fun books. I'm sure you guys have seen some of them. Um, they are Tequila Mockingbird came first, and Tim Fetterly put together a sort of a literary um, look at cocktails and some... They are classic cocktails. They have a literary twist on them. Sometimes there's drinks in there. I have seen this one before. Uh, drinks in there that are or were uh, in stories or the classic drink that Hemingway likes or whatever. But this I didn't even know existed, and I'm super excited about it, too. Same author, second book, Tim Fetterly. He's really funny. He's really clever, and he knows a ton about cocktails. And this is called, obviously, Gone with the Gin. So I did not receive these until today, and... Uh, 
I'm pretty sure I will be drawing on these books for Sig, Sig Sig Lock Lock Tales. Tales. Yeah. For quite a while. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Beth and Mark. And all of you at home will get a lot of nice use out of this, too. All right. So now, going to oh, Sigma we've got, yeah, we've got more. I'll um, tell you a drink. We've got Robin Taylor's 15th anniversary. Thir is it 15th Navy anniversary? Oh, yeah. 15th, 15th anniversary years. of yeah. In the Navy. Five years away from getting her 20 and er, getting the app out. But you know what? It's also in the U.S. military. I'm not sure about around the world, but in the U.S. military, it's absolutely a commitment to this career to do this job well at 15 years in. Like, you might sign up for one tour for a million reasons. I'm an Army brat, so this is the the the, um, ed, the why I'm coming at it this way. You might sign up for one um, tour to get out of college, to get the GI Bill. You might go for two so you get a full GI Bill, who knows what. But if you're 15 years in, you love this work, you're doing the best you can at this work, and you're excelling at this work, and you want to continue with this work, so congratulations, Robin. That's a huge, huge deal. Rock and on, and thank you, thank you, thank, thank you for you, your thank service. You, exactly. Um, hey, can you, it's me. The skull is named Marvin, you guys. We've had Marvin for a while. Is something on his head? Yeah. Well, oh, it's, it's, your boutonniere's <laughs> on his head. Come on. I got to go get him. <laughs> I didn't know. I was spilling drinks on myself, so I a, didn't know. A is a sucker for anything romance related. So I snuck a little flower in on Marvin to see if it would uh, show, the surprise would show up. So this is Marvin. This was, uh, we had barely been working together. That oh, was a, him, what him right down here. Watch oh, yeah. This. There you go. Watch. No, I can't do that. Here we go. Um, right up here. And that is actually the boutonniere that Scott wore on our wedding day on June 28th. Um, oh. That's made, part of it is silk flowers, part of it is eucalyptus, and some of it is something called sola wood, which is uh, uh, bark that's thinly shaved and can be bent into flowers. I have no idea about any of that stuff, and I'll forget all that stuff shortly. Let's see. Oh, people are just shouting out sports shows in the chat room. That's cool. Share them with each other. If you did not, if you weren't here last week and did not send in your sports movies to info at empty set, go ahead and throw those titles in. We're going to gather them all up, figure out, we don't know how we're going to do it yet, but we're going to do it. So actually we know more than that. We, oh. um, mm -hmm. so we have been, I have been, I took all of our recommendations that were in the chat room. I took all the emails that came in, except for Dirk, if you're out there, but I think you might be sleeping right now because you're in, uh, the Netherlands. Um, he, you sent it today, but we're about at 77 movies that qualify as sports movies. Um, and uh, I have to see which ones are available. So by Tuesday, I will know which ones are easily available on one of the big platforms. Hopefully, most of them are available on Netflix. And I think, are we going to build a bracket together? Oh, we're going to build. Uh, two, that's what the show is going to be. The, right. Oh, damn it. That, that damn it. That's what the show is going to be. It's going to be all about, all about building the bracket. We'll figure that out later. Let's go back to Siglibrations. The fifth, uh, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mario Spampanato's wife, Carolyn's birthday. Happy birthday, Carolyn. Happy birthday, Carolyn. We also have Scott Wilson, who is a, a junkie who comes to Sigler Fest. He's a terrific guy. He has a birthday tomorrow on the fifth, and also tomorrow is his 5.5, five, five and a half year cancer free anniversary. So huge ups for that, and fuck cancer. And then Kelsey and Matthew Carpenter closed on their very first home this week, and Kelsey became a CPA and got promoted at work. Yes. That, that definitely gets. That is absolutely boss behavior. Congratulations. I have a name for my celebratory dance now. Okay. Yeah. Is it Larry? No. It's Harvey? called It's called Milk the Giant Cow. What do you think? I mean, I told you already I grew up in New York City. I don't know a lot about milking cows. Uh, the, well, you see, eh, up north we have giant cows, which stand 14 hands at the shoulder. And they're very big animals. You can actually crawl. You have to squat a little bit, but you can crawl under there and just milk them right into. You wear a bucket that goes around your chest like this, all the way around, and you like this, and you get tired and go behind the hand. Like it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, but so it's very we, efficient. We 4 H. Know, if you guys know 4 H, you know you know what I'm talking about. We know that Scott makes up things for a living. Yeah. Well. And we know that there is not a 14 hand cow you walk underneath wearing a harness with milk buckets on it. But what you guys that's, don't we know... We just don't tell people, that's all. It exists. This goes on 24-7 <laughs> in our house. There is always a story about the pancakes or, you know, the garlic truffle almonds at dinner. So yeah. Do you know where these come from? They come where there's this tiny part literally two feet out from the Arctic Circle. There's four almond trees. Yep, it's true. Yeah, never And happened. a bunch of... And it's, yeah, it's because... Well, they're regular almond trees, but the reason they're garlic almonds is because we have uh, four truffle pigs that 
poop, garlic poop, around the tree, therefore making the almonds garlic almonds. Can you grab a couple of coasters out of there, maybe? Oh, the sure. Drawer? Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our first new bit in 16 years of Sigler in Place. Oh, Very no. rare for a new bit. Very rare. And we have a new bit for you all right now. That bit is called... Dun, 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 It's called... Headline of the Week! Breaking news from around the world with headlines that make you stop and go, Did I just read that? Yes, I goddamn did just read that right there. Let's go. Our, our headline of the week this week is, uh, it's quite impressive. It's quite impressive. Evolution turned this fish into a penis with a heart. Here's how. Now, granted, this reads a whole lot like a home repair show in which your home is made of genetics, microscopes, and various other scientific tools. And also, you are a pervert and you are into animals. So you're like the Tim Allen of animal perverts, and you're making things that are nothing more than a penis and heart. That's what I thought when I first read this headline. Uh, it, this is a spectacular, spectacular headline. This is not new news. So this is the headline of the week. The goal is stuff that comes out during that week, we put up the headline. So it's not news what's going on with the anglerfish. But I would like to uh, like to point out that A and I were recently betrothed or married whatever you call Both. it. Both. And we have learned of a lovely, lovely anglerfish couple that also recently became betrothed and wedded and be wedded and be wedded. And we've got their wedding picture and they are, they, um, these young girls. I'm just, I'm just giving a disclaimer so that I have no idea what's about to happen. They're no, so, but I'm not going to like it. I'm pretty sure. These not, two. I have no idea what's happening. You can see the love in their eyes. I don't know a single eyes. anglerfish. Not one anglerfish. Well, yes you do. It's Harriet and Murray, the anglerfish from down the street. I don't, there's not. Oh, geez. Here's Harriet and Murray. What a lovely, lovely couple. Take a look at the, oh my gosh. But I don't She's, even understand what's happening. She, this is their wedding picture. This is, this is Harriet. And that little one up top, that's Murray. Why is Murray so tiny? Not that not that a girl can't be bigger than a man or vice versa, <laughs> as I guess you can see. I'm just saying he seems very tiny and sort of like a calamari. Uh, well, it because he's a penis with a heart. That's all that's left of him. It's just a penis and a heart. Those eyes. Oh, I like angler fishes a lot better now. <laughs> I didn't even read that article, just the headline. So what you're telling me is the the, the mama anglerfish has a whole big lovely life where she gets to enjoy good gastronomy and food and whatnot and grow a big belly and and a big brain and everything else and he has a penis and a brain uh, i'll explain oh no he has a penis and a heart for fuck's penis sake penis and a heart <laughs> <laughs> are so, you kidding me i've always thought that the praying mantis and the black widow spider had the most fucked up <laughs> mating rituals in the world oh no this is way worse. There's an oatmeal comic around this. You guys should Google it. It's fantastic. Here's what an happens. Oatmeal what? Oatmeal the comic. The oatmeal. Oh, the, there's the an oatmeal. oatmeal comic. Here's how this. Here's how this works. The male finds the female. Then the male opens his little tiny mouth, locks onto the female, and that bond, ladies and gentlemen, is for life. All right. They he bonds on there, and then where grab where on there. Oh, like right up here, Anywhere? somewhere flanky. Like I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, I've, but not like. Not I have like not. The fun bits. I have not asked Harriet if I can see her fish vagina, so I don't know. I am. I don't all know. All of a sudden, I don't know. Comfortable. I don't know if I want to know, but okay. then, then. Should we go back to the bigger picture? No, because, because we have other things coming very oh soon. Oh Lord. Then, then. Oh, I'll go back. Okay, go back to the bigger picture for one oh second. Lord. Then what happens is, Herman, if that was his name, I can't remember. I'm not going names. Herman starts to. Frigging dissolve. He starts to dissolve. His body parts start to dissolve. And he sort of melds into her and becomes nothing more, in effect, than a penis dumping sperm into the female anglerfish and a heart to pump his little tiny circulatory system going. And that's it. He gets all his food, all of his air comes from the female. And they can just walk around and go, spouting off babies left and right. I'm not entirely sure how it works, but let's, you know what? Now we're going to challenge A. This is the... Oh, Noisy says, uh, I feel like this has come up on the science track late night Dragon Con panels. And I am sure you are right. Yeah, yeah. And I also yeah, yeah. am sure I was not in a position to remember it fully. <sighs> so what we're going to do now is, A is a trained actress. And we are going to attempt to do some, what do you call it? Improvisation. Oh, we might be, but I need to know more. We've got a lovely video for you guys to watch. A video about the first... 
time oh, geez. a male and female anglerfish have been captured on film. And because we're, our show is about science, here we go. There's no sound to this, I don't think. We'll see if screwed up sound all over. But we do have subtitles. Ellen! Ellen! <laughs> Ellen! 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 So first Ellen. of all, deep sea anglerfish porn, I'm pretty sure is not covered by Rule 34. Is although that this an is, anglerfish? That's, that's an anglerfish. Gorgeous. That's beautiful, right? Why I are assume, we not talking about that crazy amount of tentacle weirdness loveliness? Because the we tentacle weirdness the is so she can go grab dudes and like jam them into her body in various places. And also, she's look at that, that smile. Look at that smile. How can you, fish is king. Look at that. How That's can you gorgeous. turn that down? Get it, there girl. he is. There Get he is, Sam. Oh, Lord. That's it. He has glommed on and is slowly. You have the larger angler versus female. The male is like, my, Hi, work, Sunny. my work here is done. I'm going to go ahead and dissolve. Long flowing spines that help it sense the prey that it lures in. Wait and a then, minute, wait a minute, though. That's not prey. That's no, this, that's what the spines are for. But then the males bite it, lock on with their little mouth parts, and then their tissues fuse. And this dude, Home Slice, has got his lady. He's like, I went after a lady with a big bottom, and I found her, and there she is. And then he starts to dissolve into her. He gets all of his air and nutrients from the fish. And uh, until this video, which came out two years ago, no one had ever seen a living pair of anglerfish. It is what spectacular, spectacular footage. But what happens to the dude after spawning? Does he just stay sucked he on? Become, he stays a part of her for as long as the female is and alive. And does he still do his penis stuff? Like, oh, yeah. Like they they spawn just, several times? He's just going to town There's all day. There's none of that. There's no It's rocking. like anglerfish loads all day long. It's all over the I'm place. I'm so uncomfortable and also very fast. <laughs> uh, and then there's a bunch of this stuff. A little, few Look more at shots. How beautiful that yeah, it's fish quite, is. It's quite impressive. No wonder the I dudes... see Tiny up there hanging on for dear life. <laughs> I do. I see him. Go, Tiny. It's your birthday. The Tiny's all like, listen, man, you're all trying to get laid all the time. All I do I is be laid. Girl. I got, I got laid my girl. all day long. I mean, I would like a sandwich and maybe to watch some cops <laughs> on TV or something. I don't know. Maybe Alex Trebek. But I'll do this because... That is our new headline of the week bit, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoy headline of the week, let me see some clappy hands. Clappy hands. I'm a little in... uncomfortable. <laughs> my my wife is very straight laced. I'm a little prim and I for this. have I'm a no problem for this. talking about anglerfish loads being tossed all about the ocean I said, for I life. Gotta find one of my fans. <laughs> Jimmy. We now have to go to, hold on, I gotta make a change over here, a vamp real quick. All right, guys, I knew about anglerfishes. I'm not sure I've ever seen like a video of an anglerfish, a female anglerfish anyway, before that I would, I would like that crazy outfit. I would like to walk around with like some sort of chiffon that has sparkles in it or something. I wonder, if, uh, I, wonder if, I don't know if Scott Pound was here in time to hear about the pondy, pond water. If he was here for that. I don't know. I don't either. know either. I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't think you said pond water. Well, I was talking about Scott Pond Sweat and Kelly McCardle oh, got bonus points water. for being pond sweat. Fair, I fair. told you, Kelly's killing it today. Kelly's killing it. Uh, I did not print out your information for this. You have to do this on the fly. Oh. And uh, here we go. That's okay. So this year, this week's sponsor all week is um, 826. Uh, the website is 826national.org. 826 is an organization that helps classroom learning with reading and reading comprehension skills and it also helps at home learning now that it's covid and it also helps community outreach through um specifically through literacy and one of the things that they're doing really really well during lockdown this is of course a u.s charity i try really hard to have more information about other nations and other um, communities, but language and education is such a specific thing that for this one, I'm just going to say I did look and there are outreach programs for poetry and arts and reading and stuff, but I'm going to specifically focus on A26. A26 is doing a lot of good work during COVID-19. Um, A26 is a national to the United States organization, but they have micro groups in, in lots of cities around the U.S. And it's such a lovely thing. So specifically for COVID-19 when students are getting sent home and, and have to study at home and are away from their friends and are away from their community, like uh, 826 New Orleans is doing something called the writing on the wall. And every everybody who's participating, every child that's participating gets a prompt 
and then they post it publicly like by the mailboxes in their apartment building or the front door of their house or the front window of their house whatever the prompt is they're doing that and then people who work at 828 are you know and they're taking photos of it and then they're broadcasting it wider but you can also see you know if you were part of that neighborhood you can see them talking and they're talking about what they miss about a community they, they're talking about what they want the future to look like things like that there's also in new york city 826 uh new york city is is uh they have quarantine voices t-e Oh, so voices clever. and so they're clever. they're amplifying those my one of my very favorites is in minneapolis and in boston the micro 826s are working on something called essential words for essential workers where uh the the prompt each week is teaching um the the students who are writing about it about a specific essential worker like a grocery a grocery clerk or a garbage man or a nurse or a physician or a surgeon or whatever people who are actively working every day which is a thing i wish i would know more about too because you understand i think after f four months i understand that the things that are essential to my life are different than the things i might have aspired to when i was younger and not in a pandemic so i really love them they're a writing organization they are specifically a literary organization so as always we contribute to each one of the charities that we focus on if you have the ability to amplify this signal or contribute please consider doing that back to our main camera now i've got a couple of questions a couple of questions 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 you have questions as a matter of fact we used this question graphic last week and i had sworn upon the blood of my emperor that I would never. Who is your emperor? It's he, well now he now he's. Is it a, him, Marvin? I, yes, Marvin. I was gonna say I use his skull to drink out of because I had to kill him. No, you didn't. No, you gotta kill. Sometimes you just gotta kill the emperor. You never kill the future dark overlord, but you do kill the emperor. So we have. Um, I'm killing the future. Dark. I have to reuse a graphic. I would swear I would never reuse a question graphic, but it is you National Cookie Day. I swore it in my heart. Whoops. Guys, I'm having a hell of a time here. I don't know what's going on. So let's it's just a hell go of a day at sea, you guys. Questions. Oh, oh we've got, got questions. questions. We've got Cookie Monster want shake Kermit down to get some coins for some cookies. And he's all like, why don't you give me your lunch money so I get cookies? I get some cookies. What? Yep. That's because he went. Look what? at him. He Sesame went. Street did you watch? Cookie Monster Never would, shook down Kermit ever. He would bitch slap anyone he to get some cookies. He never shook down Kermit. You know who guys? hangs out? You know who hangs out? Cookie Monster and Wimpy from Popeye. They hang out all day Neither long. Neither one of them ever shook anybody Wimpy's down. Wimpy's like, uh, I, would gla I would gladly pay you Tuesday for hamburger today. And Cookie Monster's like, let's just smack him. Smack him. Take his money. Let's go to our questions. Oh, sweet mother. Going back to questions now. Two ring walk-ups. Here's the first question. Want me to do, you do the ring walk-up? Yep. I'll ask the question. A sophomore from the Juilliard School of Music and Veterinary Medicine with an amateur record of three wins and two losses. Known for his finishing move of operatically singing while jumping off the top of the scratching post, it's Shane, the harmonious hairball Harris. That's a good ring walk up right I there. mean, I do like that you kind of flipped the hair in Harris and made it a cat thing. Harmonious hairball. Um, What's his question? His question, Scott, how many lists do you think you're on simply because of suspicious Google search oh. for <laughs> I would like to point out that I started my list career at the age of 15 in the small town of Sheboygan, Michigan, where because I played Dungeons and Dragons with Dr. Daniel Baker, PhD, Scott Christian, Rob Otto, Jeff Rabblegee, Bob Gilland, and many others. I was on a Satan worshiper watch list in Sheboygan for playing D and D and Champions, Champions, the role playing game. We were literally in one of our parents' basement all weekend long, no booze, hanging out. We knew exactly where we were, but because we were playing D and D, we were on the Satan worshiper watch list in a very small, very white northern Michigan town. Now the kids were going out two tracking getting just getting hammered all the time and destroying shit and just having a grand old time they were not on the satan worshiping watch list although we did have satan worshipers in my town for sure that's a story for another time it was a interesting place to grow up my google search history is bad 
because of the stuff that I write. I have to look up all kinds of stuff. And yes, I'm pretty sure that uh, unless the people in the FBI read a lot and are familiar with the fiction, I'm definitely on a watch list or two or three. Although, to be fair, I don't disagree one, one little bit. That's absolutely true. You guys know that as well as I do. But I will tell you, in lockdown, like if there was no, um, no pandemic, and yet somehow these, still, these changes still happened in my, in my search history, it went from, let me look up this new makeup, let me look up this, this piece of jewelry, let me look up this artist who I really like, let me look up which movies I want to see in the next six months, to really tiny micro lessons, like how do I patch a drywall that has a big hole in it, and how do I plant cilantro, and mm -hmm. all this stuff, which to me is completely foreign. Like I know, like, you know, how do we how do we repair the garage door? How do we kill the Pope? How do we replace a toilet paper roll? Things like that. Perfectly normal, innocent stuff. Perfectly normal. Um Yo. Yo. So Just to go back to this, what I'm prouder proud proud of, if I am on watch list. Proudish. I am on both far right and far left watch lists because I have characters that run the gamut. I'm probably on. It's, well, and oh, it's Kelly, a lot. you're right. It's, it's a lot. It's not that he doesn't know about incognito. It's that his, especially when he's like in the zone and writing, he's using like as you can tell, we have this computer behind him. We have three screens here, and he's like Charlie from Always Sunny in Philadelphia <laughs> with like thousands of things. It's so Pepe. It's, it's Pepe. It's not that he doesn't know that there's incognito. It's that sometimes he gets too excited to remember to use it. Yes. Um, Angela Clark in the house. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, sister. How are you? Welcome. We are, let's see, we've got about 100 people on. So we're Jennifer gonna go Hathorne, to... thank you so much. I kind of love these. These have been sitting literally like just tucked into a little bowl in the, in, you know, like that everybody has like a random ass bowl that was supposed to, I'm not sure how you got it, but these have been sitting there since the <laughs> wedding. They don't really fit behind my ear, but I'm, I'm working it. I might have to put them here. Maybe I'll just put them here. Uh, Scott Pond says 12, 12 watch lists. He knows a lot. He knows, he knows too. Uh, well, can't talk and text at the same time. Scott Pond, you know too much. We'll take care of this later. Now, I don't have a fancy graphic for this. I apparently blew my load for fancy graphics I setting like up the anglerfish video. Definitely see, feel like I wish there was a swear jar. Blew my load for the thing with the fish. And I said, you don't have to say it twice. Because it's a penis with a heart. Definitely not say it three times. <laughs> so now we are going into... Sponsored by Big John Viscara's Hardware Company. When you're looking for mismatched nuts, come on down to Big John's. This day in Siglerism is a great thing that John has set up over at, Sigler, at siglerpedia.scottsigler.com. It's in there somewhere. I don't know. Maybe I'll put it in the comments. I couldn't tell you. He has made a list oh, of every it's day, so much more every than a day list. of the stinking year. It's so much more than a list. We're not just one. Many days are not just one thing. It's several things that have happened over a fifteen-year career of hanging out with you people. That it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So it's really amazing, and it is not a list. It's this uh, this little grid that is all hyperlinked. So all you got to do is go to the month and the day you want. Click on that. Or you can go to August and click that, and then it opens up the whole month or whatever. But just click on the day you want. Your birthday, Christmas, Scott's birthday, whatever. And it tells you every little thing that happened. It's really glorious, and it was, I'm sure, a ton of work that yeah. I, I don't even know how I would do if I had to do it. So it's super fun, and you should check that. You should. And I just realized I'm on watch list, so you guys don't have to be. That's what I do for you. That's what your FDO does for you. Um, if you want to know how to make plastic explosives. And Dr. Daniel... Baker you, PhD, slide. you yeah. are the people we're talking about when we say <laughs> you people. Here we go. This day in Siglerism. 2019, episode one of The Detective is released into the podcast feed. And John even has that linked. So if you haven't heard The Detective, you can go get that. 2017, Story Smack, episode number 23. Oh. Last of the Mohicans, 25th anniversary is released into the oh, podcast that feed. Movie. Fabulous. And all the way back to 2013, episode four of Bones Are White. Beam Up on Aisle 5, Part 1, is released in the podcast feed. I never did do a sequel to Beam Up on Aisle 5. It's a crazy story a crazy that's worth story. a sequel. And I'm not going to go too far into this uh, on this cast, but if you have been to a, uh, was it a Dragon Con where we had the uh, rock opera? 
I think so, yeah. So there was a rock opera where we we tried to crowdsource story prompts, but those motherfuckers, there's no tip jar today, sorry. Those mother, or swear jar, no, those motherfuckers created a main character who was a hooker with a, a sex worker with a heart of gold and? who had one nostril. One nostril and a portable stripper pole. And I was supposed to work these in. And those were, that was only like 10% of the story. The people. ideas were coming fast and furious. People. By which I mean you people. <laughs> the fuck? Hooker with a heart of gold, one nostril. So, now, I'm a little embarrassed by this, but I was very busy today. And Ace sends me the information. He's like, here's the name of the person who asked a question. And I try and do a nice ring walk up. You don't even have to say this out loud. I love it. I gotta say it out loud. To. I gotta <laughs> say it out loud. So she sends me this name. And uses the word, Wait use the name, you're here. Wait uses the name you're here. Dan. Use the name Dan. Now, I saw the last name. I saw the last name. But I, it didn't make the connection because the last name, the first name was not the way I'm used to hearing this person's name. So I'm going to go ahead and do the ring walk up and then you can make fun of me after for completely missing this. But I put a lot of time into this ring walk up. And God damn it. I'm going to say it. Stop, Pom. There's no swear jar tonight. And in the red corner, with a professional record. Oops, hold on. Oh, oh get sorry. Back. I'd scratch up. And in the red corner, the founder and moderator of the Jethro Toll Fan Club, with a record of 22 albums, hits the fighting flautist, Dan Aqualung Lundy. And it wasn't until I finished it, I was like, because I was looking up stuff on, literally looking up stuff on, because I'm on Jethro Toll watch list now which is a mess, because she put in Dan Lundy. And all because I saw was Lundy. Name. I saw Lundy. I'm like, well, I got to come up with something special because we already got Danny Lundy, the fighting fish, and I never made the connection that that's the same person. So I blame A. I blame A. I blame Marvin. I blame Marvin. Here's my thing. It's Danny Lundy. That's the character. Who gets a character? It's Danny Lundy. But here's my thing. The character is named after an actual human being, and the only thing I can say is I'm so grateful the way that your mind works that you didn't connect them on the same day that Danny the Dolphin Lundy and the fucking penis heart angler <laughs> were the same day. Because that would not have gone well, even though all of us, including oh. all y'all in the chat room and this one, know that a fish is how not could a dolphin. You not, how could you not give that to me before the fish bit? Because it's on purpose. Oh, because come on. Have, because Danny the Dolphin Lundy does not deserve your craziness. I would have taken time to get little like dolphin graphics there, like watching the two fish going at it. Because we know what's up, fighting flautist. We know what's up. Uh, hey, what is what is uh, Mr. 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 Dolphin's question? Uh, <laughs> he's tapping his foot. Uh, so now that y'all share a living space, what happens to the confiscated Ba confiscated bass guitars if Scott misses a deadline. Hmm. This is an interesting thing because it's not strictly a deadline. It's he has to write a certain amount a week. And while this is a question that we will have to someday address, and honestly never thought about until I read your question, like never thought about, uh, now that we live in the same space, I didn't and think about all it the bases. Yeah, you didn't think about it until you read yeah. this. And neither did I. Um, I mean, I mean, it's 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 the sardine of questions. It's really a good good fish question, like maybe even a trout of questions. This is Dan. Why, Dan, it's a great question. This is why I didn't mention the aquatic creatures together. On you the know what I said cast. when I read that question? Holy mackerel! That's what I said. Anyway, ask her. a lot uh, of people tell me that. So I don't know, but I have done a little thinking about this. And I think what will happen is I will take it away and put it. We have a storage unit because we moved out of the office in essentially five days. And we gave away a lot of stuff. We sold a lot of stuff. We junked a lot of stuff. And we put a ton of stuff in storage. And I think what would probably happen, because we already have a storage unit to store all the GFL books that we sell, um, is it would probably go there. But... I honestly have never had to take a base away because the motivation which he created himself with his uh, the person who helped him his uh, the coach that helped him and build these strategies um, works for him. He's a super com competitive guy and uh, mm -hmm. he is never more competitive than when he is competing against himself. That's right. And so I've never had to take a base away. I did get really close one week, just one, 
and uh, he beat it by 217 words. Yep. And uh, got to keep his base. So I don't know, but what I think will happen is it would probably go to our warehouse, and I would take it away without him asking. Um, what I will do, if he's willing, uh, sometime soon, we're still unpacking and getting sorted in the underground layer of doom, but once we're done with that, probably a little bit closer to the fall, um, we'll take you on a tour of some of that stuff. Like, you can see this office. This is Scott's office. This is where he works. There's a couple of... There's a guitar and a bass right there. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, our bedroom, if you saw the last, the Lair of Doom tour in Scott's bedroom, a lot of his bases were hung on the wall, and that's still true here. So um, th there's totally the incentive, because I could pick any base off the wall, and there are 11 hung on the wall now? We'll have 12? to, we'll show it, we'll show it. I, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 and the instruments deal is, hanging right now. The deal is, I can pick any guitar. Any bass guitar, any guitar. He doesn't get a choice of which guitar goes away. So if it ever happens, which... Four years in, I don't think it will ever happen. But if it ever does, I, I will pick a good one, I promise. <laughs> Robin Taylor says, lock it in your car. Problem is, we're married now. And oh, we, we have, have one, one car. car. Yeah. Um, but I will oh, fight. Oh, my goodness. What? Uh, Angela just Angela Benford just commented that Mark says, all your bass are belonging. <laughs> which I don't think I've heard yet. So I love that. I haven't heard, I haven't heard that either. Um, that old saying of the, the firearm supporters, you can have my gun when you tear it with my cold dead hands. I'm so much more hardcore than that. You can't have my bass even when it's held in my cold dead hands because I'm going to carry all of them like this into the cremation place and I'm going to be burned with all of them. Suck a bag of dicks. You can't have my base. Even if you tear it from my cold, dead hands, you can't have it. You can't have it. I mean, he says that, but he can't even get rid of a guitar he hates. That's what I'm saying. I can't, I, I'm not giving them up. I'm going to, I'm going well, to you, won't, you are going to have trouble destroying them, too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, fighting flautists, pond water, everybody out there, angler fish, female, enjoying life, male, really enjoying life, kind of clunk. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this show quite a lot. I want to remind you that this Thursday, reading brand new fiction, brand new fiction, it's about voting, goes horribly wrong. It's not... Wait, should we check for questions? Oh, yeah. You, you said start, we're going to go a little bit You late. start checking for well, questions. You maybe make you a drink, so you look. Oh. Or you guys, if you have questions, hey, you guys, let us know. We will... Uh, Simorg says if they've read Whip It, name it Devo. Good question. Go ahead and throw out a couple questions. We'll go a little long. I want to remind you, Thursday, brand new fiction. Tuesday, next Tuesday... July, August 11th? Oh, Lord. Yeah, August 11th. Tuesday, August 11th. Whole show dedicated to nothing but setting up the 32 movie bracket. I don't think we're going to go 64, although we could go 64. There might be a few playing rounds. But if you've ever watched sports movies, this is going to be the show for you. We are going to geek out on sports movies, set up the bracket, and if you were around for the COVID face lettuce tournament, which was a spectacular success and launched my streaming career, we're going to be doing kind of a weekly, probably one or maybe even two movies a week. We don't know. We don't know. We're not sure. But another big thing is this. Um, if you guys are coming back to Sigmar and Place each week. Oh, shit. I just lost it. Uh, oh, Saturday. We are going to live stream our story smack of oh, yeah, that's Last right. of Night. That's our program. So Thank talk you, about that and make sure that we do that while I'll answer a quick question. In, in Trepid RD asks, do I still play D&D? It's kind of a thing now, and you have a rightfully messed up imagination. The answer is no, I do not, because I, when I am game master or dungeon master, whatever, I spend way too much time prepping. And for the same reason, I don't play video games unless they're sports video games, because I get lost in them, and my brain, those things are made for brains like mine, and I will literally lose two weeks playing the game nonstop. And if it's a football video game, I will lose weeks, if not months, scouting all the teams, Scouting the draft, building a franchise, it's ludicrous. I've had to give away a complete one Xbox system with games and one PlayStation with games. I had to call people and say, just come get this thing out of my house and not, not get anything done. So no, I do not play D&D. &D. Vast of Night. Vast of Night is a movie that is on Amazon Prime. Yep. So if you have Amazon Prime, it's free to watch. It is a 1950s UFO homage. It is... Spectacular. We this weekend. What time is it going to be, baby? Two p.m. on Saturday. Two p.m. Pacific time. Pacific time. This coming Saturday, we're going to do a live story smack out vast of night. If you have time or the ability to watch this movie and can join us, because it's going to be spoiler central, we would love to have you. We would love to entertain you. Watch us geek out of this movie. We're going to have some details on the movie, a little bit of research, 
talk about our experience and hopefully we can play a couple of clips if there are any that are available. But if you, even if you don't, I want you to know that that will go on Saturday at two. We're going to do it live on Twitch or this platform, all of this, if you're on Facebook, right? It's everything. It's Facebook too. Yeah, it'll be, this. wherever you're watching it now, we'll be doing that on Saturday. Um, and then we're going to, we did it once before with a, with a movie, um, the Dungeons and Dragons movie, but then we're going to probably strip out the audio now that we have some of the kinks worked mm. out and just put that in the feed. So if you haven't watched it, know that going into the Saturday feed if you want to watch us talk about it, and then also know that we're going to drop a story <laughs> smack for Vast of Night, and you shouldn't listen to it unless you've seen it, unless you want to support it. Uh, we got a couple questions. John Viscar being a smartass in the chat room saying he kind of misses the Vietnamese spammers. All right. Uh, Carl Earl, does Varsity Blues count as a sports movie? I think, I think they, so. Yeah, that's on our list. Varsity Blues so. is on our list. Uh, there's a lot. Pretty much everything everybody's offered tonight is on the list. Um, Hoosiers is on the list, oh, yeah, which I course. know somebody offered tonight. Um, plan, plan, Varsity Blues is. Yep. Okay. Uh, Planet Dot says, should I listen to the original Nocturnal podcast before the new Nostalgia one so I don't get any spoilers? Yes. Yes, no. you should. The original and the throwback are the same thing. No, 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 no. He's saying the one that came out. Okay, because original would mean the first one, right? I believe Planet Dossie is confused. There is the Nocturnal yeah. Throwback that's going on right now. That's the original one. Then there's the hardcover one that came out. You probably want to listen to the hardcover one so you can enjoy that, because if it ever does get turned into a TV show, which doesn't look likely, but it's, it's, it's out in the market, that's what the book's going to be based on, and then you go back. Or you can experience it like all the other old school junkies did. Listen to the original. That's, that's better. Listen to go listen to the throwback that's going on now, because that was twelve years ago. Mm -hmm. And then and I wrote it, I podcast, I wrote a chapter, podcast, wrote a chapter, podcast. And my style has changed. It's a very different story. Your you storytelling has changed and your writing has changed. A lot of things have changed. Uh, once you get in once you get a book deal and start putting out books for a living, you it realities of storytelling in the marketplace change your style. So go listen listen to all of throwback and then then go back and listen to the most recent one. <clears throat> All right, we got to see we got any other questions. What time does it start in the 11th? Andy Antitas Fave says that's uh, what you 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Pacific. Pacific time. 2 p.m. So Pacific convert time. Convert that to wherever you are. But it's 2 p.m. Pacific time would be. I think we're always going to try to do the live streaming version of Sigmar in Place on Tuesday on Saturdays at 2 p.m. It's not every Saturday. It's uh, we're going to shoot for it's every other Saturday. Yeah, we're going to shoot for every other Saturday, but Saturdays are weekends, so it sort of depends because sometimes we have to push off, you know, chores and errands and stuff till the weekend. But that's our goal every other Saturday. And yes, uh, starting yes, this Andy, Saturday. wherever you're watching it now, it's going to be there as well. Exactly. Uh, and mm -hmm. then this is every day that starts with a T. Uh, in the same place you're watching it at 6 p.m. Pacific time, adjust for your own time. Ed Haney, the movie's called Vast of Night. Weird title, V-A-S-T, space, of space, night. Okay, let's you see if we have any questions. You did that very um, Shatner-like. I did. Do it. Shatner-like. Yeah. Uh, also, anybody who's a makeup person, can you see the unblended contour right there? I'm very, I'm very stressed <laughs> out by it. You see the very straight line there? I just... Somehow I missed that. Thank you, Chris, for the offer for D&D. I, I got books to write, you guys. Oh, that's way better. I got books to write. Uh, let's see. Uh, some more Thank you, Michael. Michael Suarez. You have Suarez. a new Thank jersey you. on the way. Congratulations. Rock on. Scott Pond, I'm offended you would even ask that question. Of course Slapshot is on the list. Totally. Now, here's offended. the thing, you guys. Any movie you think is a sports movie that you think should be included, definitely send me. Put it oh. in this chat. It's way easier for me if you send it to info at empty set. But I go through this chat when we're done so that I can take all the recommendations down. The thing is, on Tuesday when we talk about it, they're going to be movies that we can absolutely watch, as, right? As many as possible. Yeah, because there's some that are awesome movies that are not currently available easily. Or you'd have to buy it, you know, you'd have to buy a digital version for 25 bucks, and I'm not doing that, you know? It can be, like, one of the platforms. It doesn't have to be every platform. It doesn't have to be absolutely free, but they're going to be, like... Two, three dollars on it or free on several platforms. That's what we're going to build it out of. So I'm not sure your choice will make it, but it is absolutely in the running. Just email it to Ooh, me. Oh, yeah. Um, I am Learn G. I like that sentence structure. I am Learn. Uh, is The Big Lebowski a sports movie? I think. I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, I will tell you it is currently not on our list, but I love it. Well, we, we'll see. Yes, Daniel Baker, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. 
Uh, Munch says the Sandlot is the Sandlot. Absolutely for sure. on the list. For sure, Munchkin, on the obviously. List. I'm not sure if Ooh, it's available. Scott to Wilson. Us, but we'll see. Scott Wilson. Good question. Scott Wilson over on YouTube says, "What about Predator? They hunted for sport, and they hunted humans for sport." No, not a sports movie, but that was a. You know what? Let's let's give this man right now. Hold yeah, on. and Scott, I'm not sure if you were here when we when we celebrated you, but congratulations on your birthday tomorrow, and congratulations on five and a half oh, yeah. fucking years cancer free. Baza, I I have seen the one on the South African Rugby World Cup team, and I also cannot think of the name of it, but I did enjoy it. Uh, I did enjoy it. I saw that in a movie. Now, Nelson, Nelson has shot down the Big Lebowski. He says, it's about bowling. Bowling's in it, but the Big Lebowski never bowls. I mean, that's a real that's good, a good point, point, actually. That's a good point. Although, Ooh, the karate John Kid. Turturro, Do John, you have the Karate Kid on oh, the list? Oh, of course. All the course. Karate Kid. Yes, Josh. Cutting Edge is on there. Happy Gilmore is on there. Oh, do we have... Blades of Glory is on there. Do we have By the Blade? No. No, By the Sword. We have By the Sword. No, but... By the Blade's a very different movie. Yeah, but By the Sword very, is this rare and unique because, it, it again, it can go on the Aaron list, Robbie but it has to Invi be available. Invictus 100% yes, Robbie. Uh, if 100%. you're on Facebook, follow Rob Otto, friend Rob Otto. He's in there. You can see him. If you have a movie question during this show, don't ask me. I write books for a living. Rob Otto is a walking uh, encyclopedia. Kingpin is on there. Knowledge. A League of Their Own is on there. Invictus is absolutely on there. And if you have not seen it, Invictus wow. is worth watching. I will tell you guys, I will talk about it if Invictus ends up in the bracket, but I went to the premiere oh, that's of right. Invictus. That's right. Uh, with a friend of mine. My friend Doug is part of the AFI, and they hosted the AFI hosted the premiere, and that's the one, uh, the one of two movie premieres I've ever been to. Um, and it was spectacular. Cool Runnings is on the list. Karate Kid is on the list. Uh, Talladega Nights is on the list a hundred times uh, because, of course, it's terrific. Um, hey. What? I will sometimes you have to teach a horse to read. <laughs> Chris McWhite is uh, trying to solicit us into a D and D game, and he said at the tenth and final Sigler Fest, if there ever is one, he'll do fast D and D. It'll be like speed dating. And I commented back to him, "That's not going to work with A. Play D and D with A once." Yeah, and, and we talked the about whole this, thing dragged down. We did, but A decided that her character, being her character, would stop and teach a horse how to Technically, read. Technically, that was Trisha Narwani. Oh, was it? Yes. Yeah. What so, did you do? We had two. You wanted two, inventory the bag of yeah, holding. I, yeah, I was the weapons expert oh, who Bend had the Beckham. bag of holding. Yeah, Ben and Mike Beckham, Mwah. Rudy, both of those are on the list. The Mighty Ducks is on the list. I can't moi Rudy because it's oh, Notre so Dame. Oh, so this is interesting. What? Strictly Ballroom is has been a recommendation. I have kept it off the list because it's not technically, ballroom dancing is not technically a sport. Oh, no. It's, a, it's an athletic activity, though. And is that okay? Yep. Cool, then that's on the list, too. If you guys weren't here last week, I'll go over it really fast right now since we're obviously going long tonight because I screwed up the audio. Let me say first, when he says this, if you get your panties in a wad like I did for many, <laughs> many times, he is not disparaging when he says it's an athletic activity or it's a mode of transportation. These are not denigrating comments. Correct. He's literally categorizing in a way that makes sense to him. And I have fought him a thousand times, and I'll get my dander up again. I'm green-haired and red... Or, <laughs> I'm... Red-haired and green-eyed. I'm a rare so, bitch. I will say that Talladega Nights, Bring It On, are absolutely sports movies, no question. Ballroom Nights, whatever the hell it was. Strictly Ballroom. Stri strictly Ballroom. That is a sports movie, and I will tell you why. First, I will tell you because all of those involve contests where there's a winner and several or one or more losers. Therefore, it is a sports movie. Now... Strictly Ballroom, spam on my phone. Strictly Ballroom is not, ballroom dancing is not a sport. It is an athletic activity because it is judged by a bunch of people sitting on the edge of the stage. So if you're the only ballroom couple to show up to the contest and everybody else is involved in a twisted wreck on the highway with 14 cars and 17 deaths, you still get to perform. None of your competition shows up. You get to perform and you can have either a perfect score or a world record being the only one there. That's not a sport. That is an athletic activity or an athletic event. Not denigrating. Not denigrating. That sounds denigrating to me. I won't lie. I've, ta I've challenged him thousands of times. He is not minimizing the work it takes to do that. He's trying to classify them. I'll also say a couple, two, three things. Dodgeball on the list. Over the top on the list. Days of, uh, Thunder. Days of Thunder on the list. Enter the Dragon on the list. Love and, uh, basketball's on the list. Oh, uh, point Jesus. Break. On the list. Nope. Well, because it's surfing and everybody surfs. 
but it's not, they don't have an actual swimming contest. There's no winner and loser in Point Break. Okay, but that is different than is it a sports movie? If the the one where the woman I mean, gets I her, think the one where the woman gets her arm bit off by the shark when she's in the middle of a surfing contest with a winner and a loser, that's a sports movie. Okay, I'm gonna say it qualifies as a sports movie because we see a ton of surfing and an actual. But we can decide during the bracket if, it, if it's worthy of the. We'll bracket. go through it. So let me, let me finish. Hunger the, Games, not on the list. Also, oh, that's, uh, Carl Earl, I will I tell you. I don't know about Hunger um, Games because that's there's definitely a winner and losers. All right, hang on. I'm not sure it's a sport, though, as much as it's a contest for their lives. Uh, no, uh, Joe, but, uh, it's Breaking Two Electric Boogaloo is not on the list, but I love you for bringing it up because what a movie. Uh, what a movie. Rocky's on the list. Rudy's on the list. I chose to leave Forrest Gump off the list because it's not a movie about sports, even though he runs and plays yeah. ping pong. It's a movie about Forrest Gump. I can put it on the list, but no. I, don't I don't think, think it so. will make it. K-12 is on the list. Um, uh, uh, Gleaming the Cube is on the list, but I can't find it. Um, I will also say this. Uh, Carl Ooh, Earl. Oh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I mean, yeah, but that's we'll not have a to real discuss sport. It. We'll have to discuss it. Carl Earl said, now I want to see Rollerball is a sports movie. It's not a real sport. Yeah, but I can't find it to. Oh, all oh, right. Roller, roller, roller ball. is a fucking. No, roller act. ball. I know, but that's essentially roller derby in the future. No, no. You know, there's motorcycles and deaths and stuff. It's totally well, different. Then is Tron on the list? Oh, that's a goddamn good question. The original Tron, not that, whatever that thing was they remade. I'm going to try one more time to say Carl Earl. When I said uh, <laughs> green-haired and red-eyed, I thought, well, you know, I am an Irish girl. God, Maybe what? I'm the Morrigan. What about what about Gladiator? Gladiator's on the list. Gladiator's on the list. Let me go back i got to finish my categorization, you guys. I'm glad you're all enjoying this. Um, sport. A sport is you can't play it unless someone shows up to play against you, individual or team. If you are a football team and you show up and there's no other football team to play against, that's a forfeit because you cannot do the activity unless your actions directly influence the actions of another human being or their actions directly influence your actions. It's not a sport. Then the next category is, e these categories are equal. Everybody works very hard. Both teams played hard. The next category is athletic contests or athletic events. An athletic contest or an athletic event is something where if you are the only one to show up, you can set a world record or have a perfect score. So uh, let's take ice dancing, right? Is ice dancing a sport? No, because you can have a perfect score that will never be topped, only equaled, if you're the only one to show up for the contest. That is an athletic contest. Yeah. Then well, there are... Right, but but you are saying... So this is the key here, right? Like, I get super bristly about this, but I'm, I'm over it now, I think, because you're saying this is still athletic prowess, it's, it's physical prowess, Absolutely. it's all these. But he calls them athletic contests because it engages every version, an individual sport, a team sport, a group sport, there all is, of those. There right? is not one athlete at the college level or higher and probably lower in the world who would watch someone do a double, triple axle and say that that is not an incredible athlete that has worked right. incredibly hard. No one would ever watch Mary Lou Retton go brrr, and then do all that crazy in the air kung fu crap, you know, and then land a chip, boop, boop, grin, you know, like that. No, come on, that is sick. Sick amount of work, and very few human beings can do it. Hey, okay, but. so I've seen all these come by, uh, Cool Runnings, Crush Group, all that stuff. Cannonball all run. these we're thinking mm. about. Cannonball God, Run is the one, one I was going to point out. Cannonball Run, okay. is that a sports movie? It's fabulous that Cannonball Days Run comes up. Thunder is on there. Because it comes up in my third category. My third category is modes of transportation. Modes of transportation include all of the track events, not track and field, track events, because it is a way to get from one place to another, it involves all what of the... Why then can't jump on the list? Why? That's basketball. And it has a tournament. I know. I'm just saying because somebody mentioned it. Oh, I see. And then most of transportation also include anything with bikes or skis or skates are different. That goes in a... That's an arena. I don't like the modes of transportation and then version. All of the horse racing, modes of transportation, and of course, all of the auto sports because you are literally using a mode of transportation to... Compete in your athletic contest. Except I have literally never driven any vehicle like people in Days of Thunder drive vehicles. I know, vehicles. I know. But you or know what you could do? Nights you know what, you, know what you could do? You could take the car in, in Talladega Nights or Days of Thunder, and you could go get a gallon of milk at the store. It'd be fine. You can use it. Stores, I mean, stores a quarter mile away. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take the number fifty-one. I'm gonna take the car. 
Airbuds on the list, Chariots of Fire is on the list, Gladiators on the list, Prefontaine is on the list, Big uh, uh, Ben Hur is on the list. Uh, Ooh, there's well, not a Harry Potter on the list yet, but it might be. And Chris Mighty McCoy Gaps brings is on up the list. No, no Star Wars because yeah, that's not about the sport. It's a little. If it's just an insert, this gets more complicated. Pod racing is a small side story in Star Wars. It's not about pod racing. Mm -hmm. However. If it's a movie, and I'm trying to think of one right now, where the athletic competition or sport or mode of transportation is the primary focal point, but then, like, say somebody gets hurt, and then it's also personal stuff that goes on, too. If the movie's actually sort of about an athlete doing some kind of event, that is what we have as a Angels movie. in the Outfield, Rookie of the Year, those are in there. The rookies, uh, oh, no, not the rookie, because that's about cops, but... Look at Noisy! Uh, look at Noisy Astronomer! Except, except, here's the thing. I actually almost mentioned that, but I didn't want to be terrible and flip about it, but, like, no, that's not true. Competitive car racing requires so much discipline and so much physical prowess that Paul Walker died trying to do exactly what you're what saying. That, that has nothing to do with what I'm saying, though. It's no, not no, but what you said, like, you could, you could go to the store and get milk? You could. Well, It's not no. legal, but yes, you no, could. No, no. Because it's you a mode of transportation. You may or may not. That's exactly what he I'm was not, doing. I'm not he saying you Hang on, he was driving around the block, and the thing that fucked everything up is that car was so not street legal that the little reflective um, bumps on the yellow, on the yellow or white things, that's the thing that fucked How fast the car. Was he, going? he wasn't going past street legal limits. What happened is the car was so low to the ground that he kept sparking going over those reflective bumps. Didn't he smash into a wall like 70 miles an hour? Because his car flipped out because he was sparking because, it, so he was getting all these other signals. So you might not be able to go get uh, <laughs> milk. So. <laughs> Noisy says, Tim says, yes, but where would you put the milk? And she says, that's why she married him. That's very good. So, um, also, uh, Jennifer Sherwood, boss, of course, fucking Vision Quest is on the list. I married a wrestler. Uh, Vision Quest of course is it's on the, list. the sports movie. I but I love you so much, boss, for telling, reminding us. Boss, you can't hold your mud. You won't last one minute on the mat with me. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Tracy Shank, I often take my Ferrari to go get milk. <laughs> uh, if you guys keep this up, if you keep arguing with me about this, 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 this PhD dissertation that I've created about what is the sport, what is an athletic activity, what is the mode of, uh, uh, mode of transportation, I will, back on I will get the goddamn Paul Walker driving off in the sunset clip and I will play it in the middle of one of these and you will all cry your friggin' eyes out like I do every time that goddamn Fast and Furious comes on. Don't test me! Don't test me! Still I'll make you cry to Paul Walker. Still not a sports movie, though. No, it's not. Well, no, yeah. See, Fast and Furious is about race cars, modes of transportation. Oh, Bob is not. Polenska is calling me, you guys. Oh, yeah? Let's, Should I answer this? I'll take, I'll take it. I feel like it's going to be. Hello, Bob Mill. How are you? I've been waiting. How dare you? Where have you been this entire time? No, I haven't wiped my ass in quite some time. You're saying you have a deal on toilet paper? Well, I would like to point out that I did eat a lot of pasta earlier. So no high. The side dish of chili. Mortal Kombat on the list, but I don't think it's going to make it because it's I like a melted Hershey bar in a shag carpet, Bobak. It's real bad. It's real, real Bobak? bad. Bobak. Yeah. It's not Bobak. Uh, you mean one of the water jets? Not we'll clean on that the all list. Out? Uh, Joe. Okay. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll look into that. And, uh, absolutely, Boogie Nights is not on the list, but oh, I love how your Oh, God, John's killing me. The Hustler and the Color of Money. Pool movies. Are those, those are contests. You can't play by yourself. Wrestler 100% on there, Jenna Leah, just so you know, okay. right? Um, I don't know about John's question. I, I, I don't, I have to think about that. So for me, well, I'll, here's the thing. Right now, the list looks like this. Movies that seem sports-like that are about the thing, the sport, right? So I'm going to add both of those. What we're going to do on Tuesday is on Monday, I'm going to post the um, cocktail and I am going to post these. This is the list. Can you make a note or something? We need to have uh, George Carlin talking about how all racket sports are ping pong standing on the table. That's, we should play that clip. It's old enough. We won't get copyright. Why don't straight. you text that to yourself while I talk about this? Or write it down. I'll text it to you. Yeah, We're married fine. now. I can use your phone. It's fine. Exactly. 
Um, so what we're doing right now is anything that qualifies. So, okay, I agree that there are sports in some other movies. I'll take The Big Lebowski, which is a great thing. It's totally bowling, but our, but our Lebowski doesn't bowl. So that's actually not on the list, but I'm putting anything that kind of works on the list, right? Uh, Strictly Ballroom, I'll put on the list, but um, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, which is athletic, not on the list because there's not really a sport there. And then the next thing that happens is I, Balls of Fury, totally on the list. I go through and see which things are available for us to watch in a reasonable way. So what we're going to bring you on Tuesday will not necessarily look like every movie because right now there are about 90. There are 77 already and we just talked about a handful more. We are Marshall Dawn, obviously, totally on the list. Remember the Titans, Coach Carter, all obviously on the list. Whether or not they're available will matter in our discussion about what makes the bracket, which we're all going to do together on Tuesday. So keep emailing me keep putting them here real, miracle is real on steel real steel is on all these things okay. are on i'm not sure that we can get them as a free or reasonably inexpensive I'm, bracket i'm sorry we emily mcgregor brings up a goddamn excellent question that i was not prepared for she says her husband used to be a pro wrestler and he says it's not a sport it is a violent ballet it is orchestrated, but, but it's ballet not is an, a sp an athletic activity. No, ballet is a, an is ballet. Activity. Who judges ballet? Do you do you get a score? Obviously. Is there do five balleters show up in ballet and there's one winner? No, but there are clearly it's people demanding. who excel in the athletic activity. But it's activity. not an, it's not a contest. And pro wrestling, while those are incredible, talented, multi talented athletes, multifaceted, who can act, who can emote who can do all that while jumping around like crazy people and hurting themselves all the time those are scripted outcomes it's not an actual contest except if you look at the movie here's my argument and we're going to talk about it and we will bring you on hmm. tuesday so if you guys have an argument give it to me at info at empty set and i will talk at him at this but right now i'm going to use the wrestler as an example okay. that's a fucking Tip job, the swear job, <laughs> not in contention. Didn't tonight. bring the swear job. Didn't bring the swear job. Give you all the swear job. Gonna do the swear job later. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Right. Yep. Ben, Ben, it like Beckham obviously is on the list. Kelly. Oh, for Come sure. On. Come on. Come so, on. So, uh, oh God. Here's however, my play, Mad Max Thunderdome. Oh, obviously. That's a side story though. It's not about that. But these are the things that we're going to talk about. I tomorrow yeah, we have a weekly meeting. If you guys don't know this, inside Empty Set, we have a weekly business meeting. Every Wednesday we talk about the business of Empty Set. Wait, you keep we talking. We live together. We work together. We live in a 940 square foot house and I will tell you Kelly McArdle who's in the chat room and Irish Obsessions who, who's in the chat room and John Vizcarra who's in the chat room and Shannon Chavaria who's in the chat room. They have all been here. They can tell you it's tiny, right? And so we live and work in this space all the time. We go out to walk the dogs. We go out once a week to mail stuff. We go out once a week to a uh, grocery shop, but we're here all the time and we haven't had this discussion because we have a weekly Wednesday meeting where we talk I'm gonna about I'm going to show it. you, I'm going to show you how our weekly Wednesday meeting goes. You guys ready? Ready? Okay. I'm going to turn my back for a second and you're going to say we're down to 50% of our expected goal in the business account. Ready? I don't know what that means. Just say it. Scott, we're down to 50% of our expected goal in the business meet account. 50%? We've got to do something about that. So, <laughs> tomorrow we have a weekly meeting. I, by then, will have to see which movies are available to watch. And that will be the bracket we choose from. So, keep sending me all your things, but understand that if I can't watch it, like, Warriors is going to be hard to watch, which everybody should watch anyway, Warriors. but it's going to be hard. Warriors, come out and play Trevor, I have already told you, today the <laughs> swear jar is suspended. All right. I'm having a great time with the love of my life. We're having a good show. You guys are awesome. The Jennifer Hathorne asked, why are her glasses in the closet, Scott Sigler? And why oh. is the rest of that shit in the closet? Jesus. <laughs> this is my space. This is my space. I can do what I want with my space. Rest of the house I has, this space is mine. There are many like it, but this one's mine. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, Jude's in the house. Probably causing problems. Hello, brother. Probably causing problems. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is now 728. We've gone very long. Oh yeah. And I think we're going to close up shop because I don't want to spoil this whole conversation because all of the Tuesday show is about nothing but this. We will argue about what is a sport. What with is an you guys. With it, what is an athletic event. What is a mode of transportation. We will argue about the definition of a gosh darn sports movie. We will fight and claw and scratch and bite and wiggle a little bit on the side and maybe even shimmy so that we can figure out what 32 movies are going to go on this bracket list. Show up, be prepared, bring your arguments, be ready to go in the chat room and duke it out. At the end of the day, we decide. But I'm you, also, we will listen to your arguments. I'm also only shimmying. You're not, sh you're not biting, clawing, scratching? No. no. I might shimmy and shake a little. Oh, well, okay. That's good. Then. That's good. We think you're all fantastic. I'm uh, really sorry about the audio. It sounds it sounds like no oh, real problem. Andy, right? Andy, Antifa's babe. Thank you so much. Fantastic first view, viewing. Can't Mwah. wait until Tuesday. Mwah. But come back on Thursday. We're also here oh, on yeah. Thursday. Starts with a T. We're here at 6 p.m. then. Again, Thursday will be uh, first run fiction never before heard. Not by, even at Sigler Fest, right? Not even at Sigler Fest. We're going to try and do more of this once I'm done with these deadlines. So this will be your chance to be, to be there to say, I was the first who heard it, if that matters to you. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen... Oh, wait, also, we're celebrating on Thursday, Lucille Ball's 109th oh, yes. birthday. If you're a redhead, come at me, redheads. If you're a redhead, you and owe her. And she wasn't even a natural if redhead. If you are into hot, smart redheads, Lucille Ball's smart, way up at the top of the list. Yeah. Smart, smart, way hot, progressive redheads. <clears throat> she would have been 109 on Thursday, and we're going to celebrate redheads then. Uh, you know what would be really interesting, though? A, when did she die? Like, 80? An 80-year-old undead Lucille Ball vampire story? That'd be a good story. I'd like that. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we love you all. Thank you for staying around. We appreciate you. We do this to give you a little bit of fun in the midst of all this crap. We want you to stay safe. Stay, stay smart. Stay science. Stay science. And we will see you all in two days. Tune in. Join us. Until then. Mm -hmm.